Hey, we are going live and we are talking not about our diagnosis today. We're talking about ourselves as clinicians and imposter syndrome. How this shows up uh, for so many of us uh, neurologic physical therapists. And I am bringing on one of our amazing colleagues and friends and Brain Bites members, and that is Kaylin. I'm going to just invite her on here. Um, let me make sure this works. She started a business, it's called Res uh, It's in Wisconsin. And um, she shared this week about all of the things that come up for her. Hi, Kaylin. Hello. <laughs> Great to see you. Thanks so good for, to see you. Thanks for chatting um, as um i love catching up with you um and we've got a lot of folks that have joined us live so uh, because i know this so many people and you i invited kaylin because just i think it was yesterday you had this cute little picture of six-year-old you which was just like so stinking cute and i i think it was just like if she knew where you are now right um, where, where you, where you've gotten in your career so far, um, and, and the imposter syndrome that kicks in, um, this is, uh, I mean, I feel this every day, so I know we are not alone in this, um, <laughs> but I feel like people will want to know a little bit of your, your therapy journey. Um, so maybe if you can share a little bit of your story first. Absolutely. So yesterday was not my first go around with imposter syndrome. I want to start there. <laughs> so I was lucky enough to, as a new grad, work at Reactive, as you know well, Julie, obviously. <laughs> so I would say that was the first time I was really slammed with imposter syndrome. I stepped in as a new graduate. Apologies if you hear my dogs barking in the background. It's just part of life being home. Um, but stepped into the clinic as well-known and full of brilliant clinicians as reactive as a new graduate and was like, oh boy, I think I'm in over my head here. But luckily you guys had enough faith in me and to keep me on track and felt like I learned and grew a ton there. And I realized that because you are also candid and open, you're feeling the same way. Everyone's coming to work and saying, oh man, they're really asking for my advice on this. Like, how did I get here? How am I the one being asked my opinion on X, Y, and Z? Um, so was super lucky to work at Reactive for two years, left because I moved, unfortunately, didn't take you with me, as you know. <laughs> um, but moving back to Wisconsin, my home state, um, I was excited to start work as an outpatient neuro PT with a hospital-based system. Um, super excited to just extend Reactive's reach out um, east and was pretty disappointed in what I found. Just a lot of, a lot of decisions made not for the best reasons, right? Made for money, not made based on what the patient needs or wants. Um, there was a point, I'm pretty sure I called you, Julie, like frantic before I was considering opening a business <laughs> and being like, I don't think I want to do this, but there's like four months until we get in and here's all these problems for people not getting good care. And you were like, do it. <laughs> so <laughs> second round of imposter syndrome, I was like, do I really want to do this? <laughs> And so we went on, obviously, opened a business, and now I'm getting to provide care in a way that makes sense for the people who come to see me and getting to treat people like people and see them as a lot of different things other than a certain diagnosis. And it's been awesome and a crazy fun journey and scary every day, but awesome every day and rewarding. And yeah, don't regret a minute of it so far. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I do remember that phone call. Um, and <laughs> I also think like we, we hear this in a lot of places of just like some systems and this is not like down on any hospital mm -hmm. or any system, but they're, they're, they're not driven by the clinicians. They're driven by something else. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you, and I knew I you were like, so ready to do this. You had so many, you said so many dreams, um, even at Reactive when you were there of just like, oh, and like adapted sports and we could do this and we could do this. And um, by the way, 
way, you, you started reactive like two days before the pandemic. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Let's not forget that part. <laughs> I forgot. That was part part 1A of imposter syndrome was learn how to do what you just learned to do in school, but virtually. Go. <laughs> Figuring it out. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. What a crazy, crazy time. Now, um, I a lot of people, well, and then you said, now you've been, how long have you had your practice? Um, going on a year and a half now. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. So over a year, mm -hmm. and I know we refer people to you all the time. So by the way, any patients watching Wisconsin, this is your place, Resilience Neuro PT. Um, so, so good. Um, and what, like, what has that been like in the last year and a half? Like, what are some of the things that you've gone through through that time? Mm -hmm. I think first, even considering opening a business, I was not one of those people who went into PT school going, I'm going to run my own practice. I know what I'm going to do. This is how it's going to go. I have a plan. It was not at all how it went down. If you weren't clear on that from my <laughs> original story, I was super happy to be working for someone else in a system that's already established, step in, be a great clinician, go home. Yeah, that didn't work out, but it's been so, it's been so amazing because opening this practice has allowed me to treat people the way that they deserve and want to be treated. And it's, mm -hmm. it's really way more rewarding than, than I've experienced anywhere except reactive, obviously it has the same, <laughs> the same fundamentals there. Um, but it's been really great. I see people in their homes sometimes in clinic, um, running around like wild, learning a lot of things every day, um, asking people who know better every week, probably <laughs> <laughs> at least once I just send out a helpline to people who I know are more skilled in any one area. Um, so it's been really humbling and it's, you learn and grow and your confidence definitely builds as you do this. But yeah, there's never ending stream of questions. And the more I learn, the more I realize I know so little, right? Like, <laughs> and I think, I think that's how we all feel or it's just me. <laughs> but yeah, based on no. my poll that I put out, it was a hundred percent. Everyone's felt this way of like, wow, I just know, I don't know enough about yeah. X, Y, Z. And yeah. so learning to just stay curious and stay humbled and not be afraid to say, man, I really don't know, but let me get back to you on that. It's yeah. been a really awesome experience. Yeah. I One thing I do know about you is that you will do, like, you'll take some risks. You'll do some crazy things. <laughs> I learned the most when I was at your wedding and listening to your bridesmaids, like, tell great stories, by the way. Great, <laughs> great stories. Um, but I think business and by the way we don't learn any of this at all in PT school um and even if you had your MBA you're, mm -hmm. you haven't learned healthcare practice right so you could have had the best training in the world and still learning so much but there's a lot of risks to take right to step out of the comfort zone mm -hmm. of a job and to to start your own thing. Somebody actually asked you, are you cash-based or you take insurance? And I wonder if you could talk through some of those decisions, because I know we like had conversations about that too. Endless decisions. Yes, I am completely out of pocket for all insurances. So that's like the biggest, it's the biggest question I come back to all the time, whether I want to start accepting certain insurances. Um, and the reason I, month after month, it's on my to-do list every, at the start of every month, my husband laughs at me because I like sit down the first Monday of every month, like nice cup of coffee. I'm like, all right, it's a business day. I got to think about all these things. And I consider taking insurance because I know that it would open the doors to so many more people who just can't spend that money out of pocket. Mm -hmm. And then I come back to the reason that I left the healthcare system, the bigger system uh, and the hospital system as a whole. It was just a lot of the insurance companies, especially with treating folks who have neurologic diagnoses, they're so limiting in what what they think is good enough. Um, I, for example, I've had someone who it took them, this person six minutes to get from their bedroom to their bathroom and their insurance company stopped paying for visits because they said, well, they're getting there without falling. It's safe, it's, oh. it's X, Y, Z. And I am not someone who's slacking on documentation. I was going to bat trying to get more and 
when I was in that outpatient setting um, with the hospital system, it was just, it was a lot of little things like that where the patient absolutely deserves better. And as a clinician, I, you have a horrible gut feeling having to say, I'm so sorry, but you either now have to pay this exorbitant cash rate because hospital systems charge typically, I don't actually know if this is true everywhere, but I know that if you're billed cash pay, it's this exorbitant amount compared to what your insurance actually pays. Um, so I've decided to just go with a flat rate cash pay and I've been super lucky and my patients have been lucky knock on wood so far to be reimbursed pretty well by um, their insurance companies if they submit super bills. So that's been nice, but it's a stressor for me all the time. I consider it each time I have someone call and ask if I accept insurance and and it it's bites to be the reason that they can't come in and get the care that they want. But yeah. 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 It's really hard. Yes. It's really hard. By the way, I lost my sound for a moment, but can you hear me okay, Kim? Yeah. Okay, okay, good. Um, yeah, I mean, I still struggle this with this on, on the daily because uh, exactly. we also provide super bills to patients. Uh, we do take Medicare in a limited way, um, and it has allowed us to see people as we want to like you but it doesn't work for everybody right yeah. and i think it 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 is just too bad of how insurance is set up in our country um to to be set up that way to incentivize less care um yeah. shorter visits all of those things yeah. we, we could go on and on about that <laughs> but it is a big reason that people start practices is to be able to do the care like like people deserve, which is, which yeah. is exactly, exactly what you said. And then you also have, um, your renting space in a gym, right? Yep. Yeah. And yes. how did that come about for you? A very interesting endeavor when I was searching for spaces, just nothing was really, nothing really seemed right. Um, and then I, my husband and I are both pretty into fitness and just connected with that community here. He's a strength and conditioning coach, so knows a lot of people in that arena. Um, and I was lucky enough to meet a person who owned a CrossFit gym, had an office space to rent out. Um, and one month after moving into my first office, the gym closed down. So naturally, <laughs> that's just how things worked out. So I was scrambling and was so happy to be approached by um, two people who were employees of the first gym owner and opening their own CrossFit gym. And they said, we have this office space. We'd love for you to use it. And they are the best CrossFit mojo. I'll just give them a shout out because they're the, the best people to rent from. Um, they've been flexible enough to adapt a lot of their classes. And I have a client who is a lifelong wheelchair user and goes to a class every week with them. And they adapt for her. They have had, to my knowledge, no training in how to manage or work with people who use wheelchairs and they're just so open to it. They've been like, it's a dream situation, quite honestly. <laughs> that is so awesome. I've seen those videos and I'm just like, yes, but that is so cool. So cool. What a great like relationship and partnership for getting, mm -hmm. getting started. It makes it easier on you. You don't have to go find a whole building and a whole space yes. too. Um, yes. And have, have access for your patients like that. And, mm -hmm you know, at this point, what, tell me kind of about your week. What, like, what's your schedule? Like? Yeah. Well, the weeks have gotten a little crazy. <laughs> this newest wave of imposter syndrome was brought on by the idea of hiring a therapist and becoming a boss, because that's a whole other step that just hasn't, <laughs> it hasn't come to fruition yet. There've been several times where I'm like, I think I need to hire. I think I need to hire. And now it's really in my face. I really need to hire, mm -hmm. right? We need, so if there are therapists tuned in, I'll just make a shameless plug there. Yeah. NeuroPTs in Wisconsin, um, I will be hiring at Resilience, hopefully very soon, awesome. because a regular week is starting to look like quite a lot of patient care. Um, I was, as you had advised, when I first opened, very much protecting administrative time. Yeah. In a day of like, I need to just do the foundational work to keep this business running and write notes and communicate with docs, et cetera. That has slowly gotten eaten away <laughs> as I can't really say no when there are patients in need. And yeah, um, yeah. so 
pretty pretty full with with going to people's homes. I have to block travel time, so a lot a lot of patient care these days. Um, administrative time bleeding into evenings a little bit, into weekends a little bit. So the hope would be that it doesn't do that long term. Yeah, <laughs> I think my yeah. husband would thank me too. <laughs> but yes, it's that's the the biggest struggle right now is is figuring out who's a good person to join the team and and continue giving care at the best quality we possibly can. Yeah. Incredible though. Incredible to get get to that point because I think a lot of people are scared to take that leap because they're mm -hmm. like I I don't know if it's going to work. Um right? Totally. Like I might have one patient. I know I I had one patient when I yeah. started. I hired somebody within 6 months and so great like and i also did not want to be a boss or did not i still when people call me boss i'm like it's like it makes me cringe um imposter syndrome galore yes. but um yes. oh my goodness i don't know if you heard that but that was a container of like little fidgets that are on my desk that just took a hiatus um but um uh what a great great success that you have had and i know because i know you and i see the stories that you share too it's because the people you're working with are having success they're getting better um and um and i also know that you're an amazing clinician that really really cares too um Weaving in that story, because somebody asked me this today, and I was like, oh, yeah, Caitlin, too. Um, you also got your NCS in the middle of that, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And because somebody asked me, like, oh, well, like, residency versus not. You mm -hmm. didn't do a residency, although mm -hmm. maybe you mm -hmm. would call a crash course at Reactive a mini residency, but it's it's kind of intense at Reactive. But um <laughs> but you just have worked in neuro, got a lot of great yeah. experience, and then uh, took the NCS in there, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. I was all neuro, and I would definitely call working at Reactive as a new grad a crash course through residency. <laughs> <laughs> a freight train through residency. <laughs> a freight train through residency, uh, whether you were ready for it or not. But you were so ready. Um, I still have patients talk about you, Kaylin. Um, oh my gosh. I, I know you'll remember this one patient who comes in um, very slowly walking um, after a course of uh, Guillaume Barre and other things and his wife and they just love you. Um, it's been a long time and they still talk about you. So, um, so, so many great, great things. Um, now i want to ask you too you also as you as you move on from reactive you stayed a part of brain bites um and i know that was a big part of what we do at reactive and i'm curious like what what has brain bites been for you like where has that been helpful in this journey well hugely helpful in the undertaking of starting a business I think it just began as a business chat, but now there's a separate business group. But when it was even just a chat, like getting on a call and picking each other's brains and being on just a Zoom call with like eight other clinicians who are like, I'm thinking about starting a practice. Oh, I just did this. Oh, here's what I've learned. And everyone just sharing resources, support and being like, yeah, it's really scary. I'm also scared over here <laughs> and it's still going okay. Like you can do it. <laughs> So I think it was it was kind of the just the support in the community of people all over the country, but being able to connect with clinicians who are treating similar clients or navigating a similar healthcare system. It's been it's just an amazing amount of support. And especially starting your own practice, it's you do feel like you're on an island. And that's the thing I miss most is just having teammates to like sit in the lunchroom with, bounce ideas off of. And so Brain Bites is that. They're my virtual teammates, like project their faces up on the wall while I eat lunch. <laughs> but it's always super helpful. Um, I know if I have like a challenging case or a question about, oh, I have this strange diagnosis I've never seen in person. Here's what I know. What, it, what have you learned? What have you all done with a person that walks in who has these complaints X, Y, and Z? 
Um, so just having them as a resource, and I say them, meaning the collective group of people who are in Brain Bites, um, obviously led by you all, but it seems that everyone there is just a brilliant and passionate neurologic therapist in OTPT, whatever. I think you, there are more than just PTs and OTs now. Yeah, there, there. we've got some psychologists and chiropractors, Amazing. passionate folks. <laughs> Very passionate. And I think that's, that shines through like in, in a way that no other group or community has, it's just the support and care going into every message you send, every course that's taught. It's so helpful to just have courses to review, live sessions, and the opportunity to just to have the team, even if you're on an island, like I might feel like I am right now. <laughs> it is, it is lonely to start your own practice. It is. And, um, and I think a lot of us are drawn to like team, like, like, oh, let's chat about this, right? Like every yes. lunchtime, it's like, oh, let's, let's chat about these, these cases and brainstorm. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the reasons we started Brain Bites because it was the pandemic and we all needed mm -hmm. that even, even more. Um, and um, you're right, we had, we had these like live business sessions and um, it has evolved to where we now have like a group of business owners. And we, we actually started an informal book club. I just met with them before we hopped on here. And I mean, I was literally like crying with these business owners. We were talking about worthiness and, and I told them, I was like, I'm gonna talk about imposter syndrome with Kaylin today. Like, to know also that you're not the only one feeling like, am I really good enough to do this? Mm -hmm. um, can, like, am I good enough therapist? Am I, do I know enough business stuff? Like, do I need to read 10,000 more books before yes. <laughs> I can do this? Um, which no, you don't need to read 10,000 more books, yes. but sometimes I feel compelled to, to do that. Um, but to know you're not alone, I think is really powerful. Yeah, it's huge. I think the support is totally unmatched. And yeah, I can't say enough about how much it is, how much it means for me to have a team, no matter where you are in the world. It's like, I know we have some Canadians that are, will often <laughs> chime in when I'm like, hey, I have this weird question. <laughs> but also just people all around the country and everyone's incredibly supportive. And it's really challenged me to just share what I know when, when clinicians reach out to me now, which is this crazy new thing that started happening again, another wave of imposter syndrome that flies <laughs> through. Um, but just clinicians either thinking about starting a practice or orthopedic clinicians who have something strange walk into their door and are like, I want to help this person, but I'm not sure what to do. And it's helped me to open up and get on the calls with those people, set aside time in my schedule, which is the one true joy of like being your own boss is like, I get to block this 30 minutes to get on a call with another clinician. How fun is that? Yeah. And so it's, it's been the inspiration to do that and share what I know and just to share that I don't know everything and no one who says they know everything knows everything. So it's okay to be like very confused a lot of the time. <laughs> That should be our tagline. Yeah. It's okay to be very confused. No one knows everything. Yes. <laughs> I think that's one thing I, I, I love about you, but and also our Brain Bites members is there is a vulnerability and humility. Like there is not this like, I better show up with 20 references and have it all figured out first. I can just like wave a white flag of surrender and be like, I know nothing right now. Help me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and people are going to help out. Yeah. Um, and I also, you know, you shared and we started talking about this with your imposter syndrome post that was so relatable to, um, to so many of us. And I really just want to say thank you like you're showing up and also vulnerably sharing that you you feel like maybe you're not ready or you don't deserve it and mm -hmm. um and so thank you for sharing that yeah. it really it really means a lot and you are so worthy and you are an expert in so many ways and um 
I think, you know, the people reaching out, they, they, they see that even if you don't see it yourself. So I'm just going to keep repeating it to you. <laughs> I I'll know keep you looking in the mirror to yourself. <laughs> I know it can be painful to hear um, great things about you, but um, I I will keep repeating it because you um, are leading the way. And I think it's so amazing to see. Um, you're doing stuff in your practice that I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. I think I need to do that. And you know, so it's like, we never, we never got it all figured out, um, no matter how long we've been doing it. So yeah, well, thank yeah. you way too kind but i appreciate it i'll try to i'll try to hear and actually feel that yeah take <laughs> in it my in. journey <laughs> yes. take it in in this book club we just did we talked about how painful it was to hear thanks or gratitude or anything good about ourselves and how um like physically painful it was and i was like i thought i was the only one and it felt good to know that other people struggled with that yeah. and um and so I'm just like, I'm just going to keep practicing and I'm going to let people know, I know this is really uncomfortable and I'm going to tell you great things about you and maybe you'll take 1%. Oh. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and maybe tomorrow when you look in the mirror, you'll be just a little nicer to yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which we all, we all could use a little bit of, yeah. um, being nice to ourselves, uh, especially as as a business owner, you're open, you're opening yourself up in a way that mm -hmm. kind of makes you more vulnerable. You get online reviews and all those things, good, bad, or otherwise. And so, um, you, you need, you need a squad <laughs> behind you to be like, yes, yes. keep going. Cause you, you need a brain bite. Such incredible things. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited for your next steps too, Kaylin. So thank you. Thank you. I'm so nervous, but excited. <laughs> everybody follow Kaylin at Resilience Neuro PT. See what she's doing. She shares such great insights and patient stories. And we'll see. I can't wait. Like you're gonna you're gonna post your new hire. We're gonna be cheering you on. Um, and I hope more people will continue to do what you're doing. I hope so too. We need a lot more neuro PTs in the world that just care and yeah, do their best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And by the way, I'm going to, I'm going to make a shameless plug for brain bites yes. because it is, <laughs> our doors are open and they only open twice a year and um, they are open now and they close tomorrow mm -hmm. and um, would just really love to keep growing that group of people that care so so very deeply it's got a special place awesome. in my heart i'll make a second shameless plug because it doesn't benefit me at all if you join brain bites but i think you should <laughs> <laughs> mostly because i want more people to bounce ideas off of i want to grow this team too so yeah. i'll second that okay <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Kaylin. Yes. Um, thanks for sharing your time and your story. I think it's going to inspire a bunch of folks to, to keep pursuing their dreams. I love it. Thanks so much, Julie. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.